Hello peeps, Dogadeo, and welcome back to the fourth and final episode of my how to play Starmate beginner series kind of thing. Final part, we are talking about weapon systems and we will also talk about building turrets. I've been recording this once or twice already and then I noticed that it is going to get long. Like if I want to present you each of the primary systems connected to each of the secondary systems and going along the pros and cons of the effects, we could spend here about two hours at least. <laughs> what I would like to do instead is showing you how to set up such a system, how to connect these and all, and then giving you a quick overview of what you can expect and what you should try out. Because there are some combinations which are really, really interesting and others which are most likely not used at all for reasons. <laughs> what is this? How does this weapon system in general work? Well, you pick a weapon type. This is your primary type. Cannons, well, they just shoot little projectiles, missiles, yeah, well, you know, missiles, rockets. And a beam weapon, kind of the um, short range precision thing. Basically, this thing hits where the um, crosshair points at, but it just has a, you know, the shortest range of all of them. Finally, we have pulse weapons. Those basically just do an area of effect damage around themselves. Let's say you would hook up a cannon as a secondary effect to any of these. Well, cannon in principle does rapid fire, reduces the reload time and also reduces the damage accordingly, so basically you're firing faster, but each shot does less damage. Missile is interesting as well, because missile keeps the uh, firing rate, but instead of firing one shot, you fire multiple smaller ones, so each of them gets the damage reduced as well. Beam weapons, a secondary effect, these at range, but increase the reload time and thus also increase the damage per shot. Pulse weapons, yeah, well, it depends on the primary system, but we'll get over this in a second. Pulse weapons basically like make shots slower, <laughs> like decrease the firing rate, increase the radius, the impact radius of something. And if there would not be an impact radius, it would decrease the firing rate even more. At the same time, it increases the damage. I mean, by a lot, right? Pulse weapons are making stuff really, really slow. Some weapons, for example, the cannon. Let's uh, select this and let's hook that up to a pulse computer. So this is how you do this. You select one and then you select the second to create a slave. What you can also do is hook up an effect. I just pick one. And what you could also do is pick a colored block and use this as color for your projectile. All right, let's see what this thing does. And now this is what I want you guys to really figure out. So I put this on slot one, so we can shoot this here. Let's do this quickly, flight mode, and then like go bam. And you see I fired and the reload time is really, really, really long. What I want to show you guys now is how you are actually looking up the data, okay? So you select your weapon, then you hit details, and then you open this thing here. And here you actually really have the values. Like it does a damage projectile and each of them does 240 damage. That's a lot. I mean, for a cannon. Um, well, the damage and such, this also, of course, depends on the amount of modules, right? So we just have one module here and one module as secondary. This thing is hooked up to here, the secondary. So um, those two modules already do 240 damage per shot. This is for two modules, that's a lot. But you need to keep in mind, it does these 240 damage 
every that's 16 seconds yes every 16 seconds a single shot and each shot this is basically a rule of thumb for each damage you do you will consume 10 energy okay so uh, this most likely will always stay the same um, it here states DPS 10 ignored it also the power usage ignored it because this calculates everything without the effect so what you want to be looking at are these values okay here you have effects on it this is power consumption modifier so you will get more power and it will also get a shield bonus like let's uh, have a look at this without the effect and the pulse okay because normally a cannon does something like this five damage okay every second five damage let's look this up quickly five damage that's the speed 1200 range 2k reload time one second power consumption 50 because we do five damage in the case of cannon um, the secondary effects don't do much drastically this of course yeah long range longer reload time even longer reload time yada 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 but for missiles the secondary effect really adds something let's hook up missiles and missiles it changes the type of the missile without a secondary effect here would be dump missile or here would be you know standing dump missile meaning this missile would just fire in a straight shot with a missile attached to it a secondary effect we are creating heat seeking missiles so-called swarmers because if the primary and secondary meet up in a one-to-one -one ratio uh, one shot will produce 20 missiles and they will basically have reduced damage that's where the swarm is coming from and heat seeking basically they are going for friendly and hostile entities they don't care okay hooking this up to a beam computer this is interesting as well because beam also changes the type to lock on but what beam also does i told you that it would increase range and in the case of missiles it also increases speed by a big margin so these missiles are really hard to hit by point defense turrets or anti-missile turrets you might want to have this effect the blast radius stays the same 12 so no change here reload time um, 45 seconds kind of the same thing but not really does the pulse computer so you see uh, the damage like kind of might increase but here the radius 48 but the speed like these are crawling <laughs> they might not like get anything with decent thrust so and they will fire every two minutes this is high alpha damage but you really want to bring them over to your target before firing them because otherwise they might get shot down so easily it's you know okay so in the case of missiles we went over some stuff that's all good that's okay i showed you where to look up the data so you guys might want to play around with them a bit let's quickly get over effects so explosive will increase um of course a bit of the damage but also the explosive radius um this basically does very little to cannons and kind of nothing to beam weapons emp transforms the damage into anti-energy for the target so basically you steal the target uh, the target's energy punch through means for example if uh, you would fire a cannon and that would hit a block and would destroy this block then it would go to the next block behind it and also damage this and then it would go to the next block behind it and also the little, little, little. you know um, it punches through blocks and damages those behind kind of the same thing as piercing there's piercing over there basically those two uh, are punching through armor but the punch through effect also is able to damage shields and piercing not so much 
it does nothing to shields but it this is the master if you want to really punch through armor stuff like that so yeah advantages and disadvantages and you know iron are basically the exact opposite of uh, piercing because they are only damaging shields and are doing nothing to armor overdrive is funny overdrive says will increase your power consumption rapidly but also you get a lot of damage more which is you know kind of an interesting effect and then we are already at the movement effects uh, stopping means we turn the damage into a stop beam which tries to you know hold the target in place push beam pushes it away and the pull beam pulls it towards the beam cannon thing whatever what those would do on missiles i am not sure what those would do on pulses i am not sure either but they are interesting for beams yeah, well, most likely for beams, because, you know, well, normally the beam has a, a delay, and then it starts firing, and then it has this burst time, which is one second, and in this burst time, it basically fires five times. So, um, in this one second, it does five hits, and each of them does five damage, yada, yada, but then it again has, like, five s seconds cooldown. Now, with a Canon computer hooked up, you are actually making it like a constant beam. The damage per second is, I mean, the tick rate is still five times a second, but the cooldown is half a second. It uh, bursts for half a second, no, burst time one second. Anyway, it will create a constant beam constantly doing stuff beams are most suited for all these movement effects here like holding in place pushing away pulling towards the turret stuff like that what i want you guys to do is taking this video keeping this stuff in mind like what the, what does the secondary stuff do and build such a thing and then really try out your own combinations i have some preferences and i shortly would like to um you know get over them uh, one is cannon with cannon rapid fire and then add punch through to it because um yeah i really like this combination with big guns another would be having missile beam weapons and explosive just because i also like the combination of really fast lock on missiles which then do a lot of damage when they are hitting they're kind of slow firing rate but if they are hitting they are hitting hard besides that i don't like heat seeking missiles very much because you can't play along with friends a pulse computer i imagine on something really fighting on close range but we don't have that in space and the radius is so little you, you you basically would have to ram another ship and then hit your pulse weapons to actually deal any damage so um yeah <laughs> i'm not into these pretty much and beam weapons well beams can't hit missiles so i wanted to mention that as well so for um anti-missile turrets you have to use cannons because beams kind of can't destroy missiles for reasons i am not sure now i would like to show you how to set up a little turret especially an anti-missile turret because you will need them out there in this universe to you know prevent those bad alpha pirate stations from nuking you out of the sky so i figured we might want to do that now the rail system just came along which is also the reason why that took me so long to set all this up because i didn't want to do i didn't want to show that with the old docking system still in place what you need to know about rail system is there is the rail system itself and there are some helper blocks this is basically a mass enhancer so if you're building bigger turrets you will have to include these they are taking energy, but then they are also making bigger turrets move 
normally. Without such a block they would kind of crawl. And the other thing is a rail speed enhancer and let me quickly show you how these work. You can adjust the speed um, a rail turns with it. They are taking into account how many activation blocks they are connected with. Okay, and depending on the amount of activation blocks and which of them are active, let's say you would have three activation blocks and two of them would be active, then the speed would be like 66%. Two are active means two thirds of maximum speed, so 66%, okay? Right now I have one attached to it and this one is off, so we are having speed zero. I'm turning it on and this thing spins at speed 100. You might want to, you know, know this as well, even though turrets might not really benefit from it. What you need first will be a rail turret axis, that's it. So you want to turn it up, so the thingy here, the red one thing is up. And then we need to figure out which direction it is pointing. Now it's pointing like over there. Okay, let's set it like this. Good. This is uh, the part we will have to do on our ship. Now, we have to leave the ship to build our turret further. Well, we could add some mass enhancers, but we don't need them right now. Let's hop into this ship. Let's float away and here you see I have the rail docker in my hot, hot bar and I can select this now and then I can dock to this thing like so docked okay Bloop. there we go now this is just one axis of the turret and now we need to provide it with well one axis meaning I can just turn left I can't get up and down I can just only get left and right okay so if we want a turret being able to fire up and down as well we need another turret axis block so that's these now we need to turn it around so it lets us basically tilt um, we want to f make it face forward still there is forward right if you see the arrow above there we go forward see that arrow there points forward okay I'm, I'm Basically, I'm building everything pointing forward just because it works. <laughs> um, that thing is not really um, nice, but uh, it will do the trick. Now we need to create another ship, Blop. which then will be the turret barrel. Basically, that thing was our turret body. Okay, so we are turning this ship to Galactic North, just to know we have everything we need. And then what I love doing is getting this over there and adding the rail docker, which we are going to need in a way it points forward on the opposite side of the core okay and now we could already dock it uh no we still need to put this thing in our hot bar there we go and then we can bleem. there we go and now you can see we can move up and down left and right okay so see works now we need to add to make it a working turret we need to add stuff um, 
They are my cannon computers. Let's use these. Seven. Two. We pick one and say the other one is the slave. And then we are going over here. And we are going like... If this is the master and this is the slave... We are doing this like such. And now we still need a Bobby AI. We can put this basically anywhere like such. And then we have to hop out our of our turret. Now this is not the best shape. You could really do this, you know, more elegantly, but it works. So let's activate the thing and tell it it is a turret. Tell it it is active. And normally I would set it to f only fire at missiles. But right now I'm setting it to any just to show you guys that it works. We are selecting this target dummy and make it start ship AI minus one and make it a pirate. Um, oh, there we go. And you see, our turret is rapidly firing pretty precise as well. This already concludes our tutorial. Of course, you can build turrets as big as you want. You just might want to have, you just might have to add you know, mass enhancers. I hope this helps you guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you liked it. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. That's it. See you next time. Bye guys.